Hey everybody, what's going on? It's Eric Johnson from Airtay Throws Nation. In today's video, we are going to do some breakdown of the Olympic men's shot put. What an amazing competition. Same top three finishers in uh, Tokyo as you had in Rio. And of course, kind of the same thing. Olympic record again by Ryan Krauser. What was more impressive is that every throw he had was over his previous Olympic record. Um, Joe Kovacs, again, amazing competition. And uh, Tom Walsh saved his best competition. Obviously, all these men threw basically a meter further than they did in Rio. And that is pretty amazing. It tells you how much the level of the men's shot has just exploded globally over the last few years. So what we're going to do is kind of take a look, look at their kind of techniques, what's similar, what's different, and what makes Ryan Krauser just so incredible as now the world record holder, seven centimeters off of his own world record at the Olympic Games. And uh, we're just gonna take a peek at everything. So here we go. So let's look at uh, Krauser. Um, you know, one of the things we talk about, obviously the goal with a lot of what we do is that, you know, the throwing chain reaction system is a way to take something that happens super fast. Ryan Krauser, all these Olympians, you know, your pros are your perfect example. They are the fastest and they are the best. And everything that you're looking at happens super quick. And so one of the things that you're doing is we want to be able to create technical consistency. And I think that's what's so impressive, especially about Ryan Krauser. Now, if you look at Tom Walsh and uh, Joe Kovacs and Darlin Romani, they too are, you know, they're the, the, some of the greatest throwers of all time and they're super consistent, but Ryan's consistency has been just up on another notch. Um, so again, the one thing we talk about is how do you look at something that happens so quickly? And here, you know, the thing that when you look at it, Ryan Krauser, this is what I refer to as the holy grail of the throw, that movement around the axis. So what, what you know, when you're kind of looking out there, um, you've got to see, we always kind of try to teach, there's kind of these points, right? And this line is essentially going to move slightly. You see that? And now you're going to see, see how that line's there? So it starts back here. And this is in our system. We call it, you know, pillar one is the wind up. This is pillar two. And so you have to be able to move the body. Now we talk about there's a there's an optimal position of the upper body, there's an optimal position of the lower body, how the sweep leg action, right, is gonna work. Look at you know Ryan's hips, look at the shoulders, and look at the balance arm, right? Now this is key, right? Look at the knee. Sometimes people push this knee too far this way. And that's not, in our opinion, how it works. What it has to do is be able to get around. Now the knee is going to push into the direction of the throw. So, so some people, you know, over the years, and again, the, the the insights and stuff that I like to provide in these videos are just, you know, my own experience as a thrower and my experiences as a coach, and what would work and whatnot. So, um, so here's what we call as our pillar two, and then again pillar three. So he's going to push, and that's where we call the drop in, right? We're not dropping down, and some people would argue that Krauser, you know, drops, and this is where they change this rule. Now here's my thing. I, I'm going to jump around because that's kind of how I I do things, but this is I heard we we posted up some things. Everybody's like, oh foul foul. They changed the rule one two. I always thought it was a stupid rule because nobody's sitting down and throwing you know 22 plus meters. Nobody sits and then goes. That's contrary to how the mechanics and the physics of the sport with an athlete's always moving in. So when we look at Joe Kovacs, you'll see he's gonna. They're all all these guys are pushing off of that sprint leg into the into the middle, and you know, so I would have everybody who's talking about it, that isn't a foul. And the reason they deemed it not a foul is because the athlete would be going over. Well, if you're moving into the direction of throw, and you're not going to throw 23 meters going backwards and then going forward. So that's my argument on it. I think there's a down motion where the foot comes, but the motion is still always moving forward. And that's why I'm glad that the rule was changed. And, you know, and I'm sure if they hadn't changed the rule, Ryan would have been able to adjust and he'd probably be thrown just as far. That's my opinion. Um, him and his dad, obviously, 
they've got this dialed. They they they're they're incredible, and he's the greatest ever. And so what can what else can you say? So here here's the key thing that we talk about though. Again, this is kind of where we're dropping. We call this dropping in appliance speed pillar three, and I think this is what's really interesting. Some people will say Ryan comes down. Um, you know, I've had the opportunity to ask Ryan. He tries to get this sweep leg out as far as possible, and you know this is the other key thing we talk about this this is a counterbalance right so he's got everything moving into the throw look at that direction he is sprinting the shot looks like it's back what he's doing is getting that lower body ahead so there's a certain window we talk about windows at each pillar right because if we hold this arm back too far you're gonna start to mess with that optimal counterbalance so at any rate, I think here's a perfect example when Ryan hits, you know, as he sprints and that sweep leg's going to start really whipping ahead. Look at the upper body's kind of slow down, right? This left arm's here is one of the things we teach. We teach how we're going to create, we call it the rewrap. We want to keep that arm from continuing to open. A lot of times what a lot of throwers do, and you're not going to see it at this level, they're going to open that left arm um, and that left arm kind of either wraps late or sometimes you see them pulling back. And in my opinion, I'd love to ask Ryan Krauser what, what he's thinking and if he's willing to share that. But some throwers actually do this, and I see that with beginning throwers. I don't see these guys doing that. What I see is that arm holding there, and then as their right comes in, it gives this kind of appearance that the arm's pulling back. So that's something to think about if you're if you're looking at. And again, these are opinions. There's my opinion. This is what I, what I think I see. But these are the things we've taught a lot of our younger throwers, and with a lot of success. But these things take years. I mean, look at look at Ryan's progress over the last five years. Right? He he came in, exploded, won the Olympics. He's just been getting so consistent at 22 meters. Then that started being 2250 plus. Now he's had you know his last what. Uh, four competitions, what, trials, Olympics, um, and then Prefontaine. So he's had his last three. And I can't remember we having a meet between Tucson and trials, but he threw 23 meters there. So he's had four out of at least his four or five meets where he's over 23 meters. Pretty amazing, obviously. Um, so here's where we talk about that's that pillar for this kind of acceleration, right? And you're going to notice this is common. This is what all these guys are doing. They're all doing, in our opinion, essentially the same thing. They have their nuances in their individual aspects. Ryan's the tallest of all these guys. And so right here, you see him how he gets into that power position. So he stays wrapped. Once that left comes down, that the, the left arm goes out long. You have to take a long path. Some people are teaching to be very active with this arm. And again, um, I would agree with that, but there are nuances on how this arm has to open. But notice it's opening out nice and long. Ryan pulls around and he really squares up. That left foot, the block leg, you're going to notice is really getting down there. Look at the look at the elevation and the pushing of the knee, right? The elevation of the heel and the knee. And I think it's really more focused as the knee turns and watches hip drive through. And that's what allows him to get that nice extension over the board. So this is his 2330. And you can see really clean throw, big, big, big throw. Okay, so let's take a peek at, um, let's just play it in slow-mo. So here we go as we come around. Boom. Look at that. Just, I love the punch. Like, if you're a shot put enthusiast, you know, this is just never gets old. It's just it's amazing right you can just definitely kind of lose you can watch and trust me I've already watched this video a gazillion times um, I think this is what's so awesome about Ryan look at how this is the key the left side pulls and you see how it's turned the lower body is turning and creating that torque right and this is what you want to learn as a discus thrower or you know rotational shot putter you got to create that tension that tension comes up creates that extra stretch reflex and you're going to be able to smash the throw so um, obviously nobody has really done it better um, I love how as as he gets to this point of the throw both feet essentially you know on the ground some people advocate jumping I, I think that's a mistake there's definitely a lift but you're going to notice here I think this is the key 
Look at Ryan, there's not a lot of up, right? There is some up, right? He comes down and then he's gonna lift. And when we teach that, we always talk about like there's some exaggerated kind of mental processes, but what you're doing physically doesn't match and you learn how to bring those two things together. So we teach that there's an elevation, but you because you're moving the amount of time up and down is very short. But if you're vertically, if you if you I think if you're really trying to vertically jump, that's a big mistake. Um, and I think you can see that here. Ryan does not jump right. He is working the crap out of the ground and lifting and getting that hip ahead. And that gives him that long strike. And here's the thing. Ryan has probably the shortest left arm. So the argument would say, is this the best way? So I've had throwers that have thrown far with the straight left, which you're going to see in Walsh and Kovacs. And um, I've had throwers that, uh, you know, are throwing 60 plus feet with the big ball at, at like NAIA level. And they will have one in particular. So I think it's going to be somewhat of a of a personal preference on what's going to work there. Clearly, uh, I had an opportunity to meet Ryan and his dad. His dad's obviously, um, for people who may not know, Mitch Krauser is a guy who has coached Ryan, right? And he works with his dad. And I've asked him, I said, do you guys purposely try to pull that arm in? And Mitch said, it's really something that's kind of left over from him and his glide years. Now, clearly, he has an amazing finish. And... <laughs> You know, so you, you have to look at uh, this is what works best for Ryan Krauser, clearly, and very clearly. Okay, so let's take a look. So, again, that's kind of a quick breakdown on here. Now, let's look at Joe. Now, Joe, again, here's, the, here's what's interesting, right? Joe is 5'11". Um, Joe is actually, I think, 5'10 and 3 quarters. Um, Joe is an absolute monster in the weight room. If you've seen some of his stuff, he put up a video. I think he did like 840 for four reps in the squat. Like the guy, I've seen what he do. He posted a video where he did like 705 or for 10. Joe's just an absolute friggin' monster. Maybe one of the strongest, if not the strongest athletes in anything. Um, so here's where, um, you know, you notice Joe again, real similar. Look at that. Look at that angle. We talked about with Ryan, you look at where that knee starts to push ahead. That knee can't push ahead until we call it into pillar three. He gets active with the left arm. He doesn't, um, open the chest, right? That's, that's the key thing. You're going to notice none of these guys are really doing that, but they're more active. The shot sits on top of you. There's some major differences between rotational shot put and discus. And so you're going to notice as same thing, right? We saw this. We saw the left arm and the sweep leg with Ryan. And now look at it's it's very much the same thing. Big wide sweep. That's going to come around. Watch Joe get that arm and watch that arm kind of hold the position so he gets that big wrap. And then you're going to see him come down again long. Always got to go out long. Got to get that down. Joe is always more up on the toe, but Joe smashes the crap out of this. And this is uh, 2265, massive throw. This would have won every Olympics in history. This would have been an Olympic record in every other Olympics. So it really just kind of puts into perspective how amazing Joe is and how, um, you know, how incredible what what we're seeing and what Ryan Krause is doing. So let's let's play that. Um, we'll play Joe here, kind of slow-mo, watch again the same thing, boom. We'll look at a couple other things as we break down Joe in slow-mo. Again, look at, I love the, the action. Again, watch that aggressive sweep. You see that, and you see that sweep, that lower body really cranking ahead, just like you saw with Krauser. Again, it's hard to really express, right, that these guys are like, these performances are amazing. So, um watch as uh, I really love how Joe look at Joe's right leg is ridiculous right like look at that thing just smashing into the throw I mean the lower body just never there's never any delay right watch that right leg wham I mean and Joe has the same thing the thing you're gonna see with all these guys is that block arm stops that block arms never back I see a lot of people get taught how to pull how to come up and come down this is not the action on a rotational throw it's out and it stops right boom it, it's gonna hit and watch i think this is what's 
what's so impressive again Joe really punches ahead he's got this amazing strike crushes the shot look at that block arm you have to feel that push right you feel this you can't feel this I see a lot of people out there teaching um, really active left side which I don't necessarily disagree with I think there's a window and if you get out of that window that's something we talk about in the throwing chain reaction you're out of position you're you're not gonna make it so they come around boom it's just like a hard crush that block arm wham and you feel that right and we always equate it to a knockout punch like MMA or boxers basically when they hit right the boxers aren't throwing punches like this they're throwing punches like that and this is the same principles. You gotta block that block side and deliver, bam, you wanna deliver that big punch. So again, Joe does that. Joe's always so impressive. Again, what do you have, five, five throws or four throws over 22 meters at the Olympic trials. He did the same thing here. Mass, you know, ton of throws. What I think it was four or five over 22, two over 22. He went 22.60, 22.65. I mean, this is just, just incredible. Okay, so let's take a look at Walsh. Now, Walsh is clearly the one everybody looks at. Now, Walsh, um, these guys are trying to, in our opinion, it looks like, right, he's trying to get super, he gets more active again. This is, again, what we talk about, and we teach these elements. We've had, uh, had one of my athletes this past year, we had more of an offset kind of modeling Walsh, and it's, it's a definitely a tricky technique, but this is what you're looking at again. Here's that commonality, long balance arm, big sweep leg. This is, the, this is a system, right? The knee is really pushing in. Walsh has the offset. So let's do this. I'll play, him, I'll play Walsh in full speed. Walsh is very quick. And again, Walsh, uh, what was it, 22, uh, 47? And uh, big day. I mean, you know, he was only, what, seven centimeters off the previous Olympic record. So great performance for him um, in, a, in a very good series. So, but look at this. Watch Now, Walsh really cranks it. And Walsh gets the orbit a little different. So you're going to notice that Walsh, again, you're going to see where, where Ryan and... I think Ryan and Joe actually have much more similar technique. Um, I think... Walsh and Romani, they have more attributes. I think they're a little bit more similar. They're going to drop their left arm a lot more. Ryan and Joe have their arm up, and we'll look at a comparison of all four of them in a second. But look at Tom. He really comes down. Again, you're going to see the same thing. He really he gets this big, wide uh, knee position here, and it really, he I think, I love the way his left arm comes out. You see that that big, long position here he's going to come down look at that foot come down um, whereas you see Joe was a little higher so it always makes me think you know I think when Joe's 2290 that foot was a little lower um, and 2291 and then uh, like 2265 and 70 I think that t t that foot looks a little higher that, that's what it looks like to me and again it's always easy for everybody to be armchair quarterback right you can sit here and say all this but this is the Olympic Games the stress levels everything it's like it's all the marbles so until you've been in that and I've never been in that situation which is what of course everybody dreams about but um, what we want to do is you know understand that there's going to be those little nuances and those are little details so i don't know does that add another 30 centimeters to his throw could be maybe that's 2295 right 23 so but look at looking at walsh again he gets the orbit he gets here again there's that block arm again right we see how it stops now he's got the long arm joe had the a little bit of a bend but long and here's walsh again look at the extension see how these guys just really get out over the board Okay, so let's take a peek at all four of them. So what we have are, we have Joe and Ryan. This is obviously your gold and silver. Um, go Team USA. And you are going to notice that what we did is we, we have these guys synced at release, right? And same thing here. We have um, Tom and Darlin Romani. We have them synced up at release. So here, here we go watch you know Romani look at how he really gets ahead now Romani apparently um, had some injuries and again you didn't hear about that he came out he couldn't throw for an extended period of time the lockdown in Brazil was quite extensive at a certain point 
Um, and so he had a hard time. And so it was pretty awesome that he came out and had a big performance at the Olympics. Now, again, notice what I talked about with these, these guys. Um, we'll look at, we'll look at the same thing. They're all, here's Darlin. You know, he, Romani has this, he opens more and the sweep leg turns over. The majority of throwers, in my opinion, could not get away with that. This guy's a massive dude. Uh, I think I heard Krauser say that this guy's about 360 pounds, 370 pounds. Um, Joe's, you know, 330. Ryan's like 320. And Tom, I think, is like uh, right around 300 pounds himself now. I think he's at least 285, 290 if he's not three. So here's the thing. Notice these two kind of with their more active left side and notice Joe and Ryan, right? And you're going to notice this is where Joe really speeds up. And that's how a guy who's 5'11 is able to throw distances that are, you know, within a foot and a half of a guy who's 6'7 at this, you know, level. Um, so, but you'll notice here, again, as they start to wrap and accelerate here, these guys wrap lower, right? Watch Darlin's arm is high and then it comes down. And look at Walsh's arm come down. These guys both come down. This is where I said these guys are more similar. And you're going to notice here, you're going to see Joe and Ryan, right? Very much similar with the same arm position higher up. So what happens is these guys come here, but they all finish long. And Darlin looks like he's pulling off. Like, you know, if you looked at Darlin's 2261, I think this PR, again, he had that squared up a little bit more, right? And that's the difference between you know, 2180 and, you know, 2260 is he was more squared up and punching it a little bit more like what you would see Joe do it. I think this is what you saw more of Romani when he hit his PR. But again, you know, look at the differences. Again, here's the similar. They're all moving the lower body. Watch right here. We'll focus on Tom and Darlin. Look at the, look at the arm position. Look at the delivery leg. They both get the the block foot down they're squaring up look at the look at the left arm he gets a little bit of a bend pulls the head a little bit tom stays on it stays really nice block really pulling you see tom really getting around the axis right let me switch that tool okay so you really see tom like right this kind of thing but look at how they're all extended now let's go and look at joe and ryan you see this look at how like again longer arm slight little bend um more of a bend but you see how it stops we always say it stops at the body line and then that's how the guys are able to hit that punch like i was explaining earlier so again um you know just a little breakdown this is just kind of you know these are the things we see now again we look at things like you said it's that's pillar one what are you doing in the start these are the things that make a huge difference each of these guys in a perfect example, right? A lot of similarities, lots of individual aspects. That's one of the big things that we teach in our system. We want to teach you how to see the throw, understand the throw. That's what the six pillars of our throwing chain reaction system do. We're trying to make sure that you are learning the throw and you find what works best for you, right? Um, like this. This is slightly different. But watch when they get to this position, right? These guys now start to look really similar. And then once they all come through, right, they're all basically getting into that very similar power position. And so let's look at Krauser and Kovacs, right? You see them again, really squaring up and punching. And all these guys create that great extension. So I'm jumping around a little bit, but the point is, again, you have to understand what works for you individually, right? That's the key. Now, they're all in our argument is always that these guys hit the, the same six pillars, but they have their individual nuances that optimize what they're going to do at each position for them. Joe's 5'11. Darlin Romani's like 6'2, I think, six, maybe 6'3 six, ish. Tom Walsh is right around, I think, 6'2, and Ryan's 6'7. So we got different heights, but mechanically, um, what's going to enable them to work fast? What enables Tom was always the, the, the lightest of, of the four. He was like in terms of body weight. Now, I think he still has some big bench. All these guys are like, you know, big time benchers. Ryan, his height is probably making up for the fact because he's probably not 
as strong as some of these guys, but he's incredibly strong. So strength is a factor. All these guys have amazing strength levels, but the key is you have to understand what's gonna work, what are those details that work best for you, and that, I think, is one of the best things you can take away from looking at the Olympics, looking at how good these guys are, um, their performances are amazing. It was just always fun to watch. I think the Olympics, we're going to be covering some of the other events as well. Um, I'll do some of these. Hopefully you guys like this. So I'm going to stop talking because I've talked forever and I could talk forever about this stuff. I'm such a fan. I have such an appreciation for what these athletes do and what their coaches do. You know, uh, Mitch Krauser with his dad, Ashley Kovacs for Joe. Um, I don't know who Darlin's coach is, and I know I think it's Dale Stevenson for Tom, but you remember the key thing is that all these guys have um, coaches that have gotten them there. That's a really key thing. That's a big thing. Again, part of our big focus at, at Verite Throws Nation with our throwing chain reaction is that we're trying to help more coaches. We've seen that. Just remember, you don't get there on your own. You got to have, uh, you know, your partner, your coach is going to be your your right hand, and you, none of these guys could be there without that. I think they'd be the first to tell you that. So congratulations to all these throwers and their coaches. The Olympics was just fantastic to watch. It's going to be really exciting. You guys, are gonna, we're going to put this video out. There's going to be a handful of Diamond League meets left. Krauser just came off a of Prefontaine and threw another 23-plus meter throw. Um, so just incredible to watch. But uh, congratulations to everybody. Hopefully you guys liked what we covered in today's video a little bit long, but um, I can talk about this forever and hopefully you guys enjoyed watching. If you have anything you'd like to see or anything specific, maybe I'd like you'd like to have broken down or specific parts of the throw, be sure to throw that in the comments. Be sure to check the links to check out our throwing chain reaction system if you're looking for how to understand the why and how to see and coach and uh, figure out specifically the individual need for each athlete you coach or if you're coaching yourself that's all there so we thank you and we will see you on the next video take care well, hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video as you can see there's a lot that goes into what we do with the throwing chain reaction system if you would like to learn more about how to structure your practices and find the things that help unlock your potential click the link below and we will see you on the next video